Hey, everybody. It's the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy here with Americans comedian Kurt Metzger and our guest, Brianna Joy Gray, host of the podcast Bad Faith, co-host of the Hill TV's Rising and host of the show on Colin, The Debrief with Brianna Joy Gray. So critics of Force the Vote were very vocal back then in claiming that if Force the Vote happened, then Kevin McCarthy could become speaker and many other claims that they made to try to uh, dissuade people from supporting force the vote. And one of them is uh, this guy. Uh, he's the host of a show called The Middle-Aged McCarthyites. Really great show. I recommend it. And this is what he says. The force the vote children amuse me. They think if you force a vote, you automatically win it. I originally supported the idea because progressives should use their leverage. But then I found out that they had no plan for who would be speaker next or how to win the vote. Hashtag children. That's not what he said, though, at the time. At the time, he said this for all people, and this is back in 2021 when this is going on. For all the people pushing fraud squad, do you understand that if all 10 Justice Democrats had voted present, GOP leader, which is McCarthy, would be speaker right now? <laughs> what would that have accomplished? Easy being destructive. You have to come up with a plan for being constructive. So, what he was <laughs> saying back then was that force the vote would have led to Kevin McCarthy being speaker. Now he's saying, that actually really – I just uh, – the progressives didn't have a plan for who else would be speaker but Pelosi and also didn't have a plan for winning the vote. That's why I opposed it then. And Bree, so, you, you've been on the receiving yeah. end of a lot of attacks for supporting force the yeah. vote. So what do you say to critics like this? So for one, I mean technically if, if a bunch of Democrats voted present, that is technically true, right? Because – it lowers the threshold of total votes that are needed and it could throw the vote. But the, the the thing is they should never do that. That's ridiculous. What Democrats are doing now is voting for an actual person. As long as you vote for another person, yeah, the Republicans then are there's voting no now risk for, of actually... Yeah, the Republicans yeah. are voting yeah, now other, for, sorry, for, other people. for Jim Jordan and for Donald for, Trump, not voting exactly. president. Exactly. Yeah. So long as so long as you pick a guy, <laughs> so long as you pick a person who isn't the Democrat person, you aren't at risk of actually throwing it to the to the minority party. So that's, that was such an important talking point for the force the vote detractors back then. And the fact that that was their like most significant rebuttal and it was a patent lie revealed how bad faith the pushback really was. And I did a three hour, I was, you know, it was a really distressing time, but before force the vote, a lot of people in the left community, I considered to be real friends and allies. We had just come through the Bernie Sanders campaign. I was national press secretary. We There was this sense of unity. People were reaching out saying that they would do whatever they wanted to do to help. And, you know, maybe there weren't real friendships. Obviously, there weren't real friendships. But I felt a genuine sense of camaraderie with a lot of people in the, in the left community. When the conversation around Force the Vote started, you know, it shocked me how quickly people were able, were unwilling to even hear what the idea was or frankly understand the very basics of the um kind of mechanics of it in the in the house as evidenced by their misunderstanding of this issue it's seemingly because of their personal animus for Jimmy Dore who happened to be the first one to really latch onto this idea but i actually heard it ironically enough watching Sam Cedar's show and knowing the acrimony that Sam Cedar has for Jimmy Dore I heard Sam Cedar say it was a good idea. And I said, well, let me look more into this because if Sam Cedar is willing to say something that Jimmy Dore said it was a good idea, it must be really top notch. I looked into it. It seemed like an obviously good idea. Crystal Ball, Kyle Kalinske, who founded Justice Democrats and was very disappointed in the behavior of the squad, also thought it was a good idea. Chris Hedges, Cornell West. There was a significant community of credible people who were behind this. However, the TYT and, and Minority Report universe apparently based purely on their personal animus, refused to even know the basic facts of what was going on. And so a month after Force the Vote or so, I think it was during February of that year, I wanted to reach out and try to put this community back together, to be honest. Like, I don't I don't enjoy being at odds with all of these people. I don't have any personal issues with people, except for the ways in which they've lo leveraged, they've lobbed personal attacks at me at this point. But I had, a, I thought, a constructive debate with Sam Cedar for three hours on my show. It's still the most watched video over at Bad Faith Podcast. And it really blew my mind that he knew he was going to prepare to debate me. He knew he was coming on the show. I had written an article in Current Affairs completely explaining my point of view and the argument. I had, believe, already done a debate with Ben Burgess on Katie Halper's show. I had been on the Hill several times to talk about it. I had talked about it on my own show with Kyle Kalinske and Justin Jackson. I mean, my opinion and what the strategy was, was very much out there, even for people who didn't want to hear a word from Jimmy Dore. And the idea that he had the hubris to come on my show 
and like an hour and a half in, say Kevin McCarthy could become Speaker of the House and not realize <laughs> what a patent lie that was. To be so ignorant, it blew my mind. You know, but we we worked through it. I thought we had a civil conversation. He basically admitted that the only reason he didn't like the idea was because of Jimmy Dore. And also he alluded to having received a phone call. Mm. I don't know from whom, but he alluded to having received a call about how it was a bad idea and that we should drop it. So whatever, whatever was motivating him very obviously wasn't substantive and rooted in the reality of the plan. And unfortunately, because he and Chang have such large audiences and have credibility with large portions of the left, so many people to this day believe that Kevin McCarthy could be Speaker of the House. The other thing they used to say, by the way, is um, Hakeem Jeffries would be Speaker of the House and that somehow Hakeem Jeffries was worse than Nancy Pelosi. They said if if they couldn't if they couldn't get the votes for Pelosi, they would just nominate Hakeem Jeffries, which also would not work if the squad doesn't vote for Hakeem Jeffries. They can still hold out. It doesn't matter who the person is. Um, but the idea that you need a plan is obviously bunk. And it, one, one last thing that's worth noting, the same way all of the kind of uh, establishment left figures kept saying, well, you don't have a plan. What's the next step? You need to have an alternative speaker. That's exactly what the Laura Ingrams and all of the establishment Republicans are saying right now. And guess what? These kooks that are doing this, they have no plan. They don't really want any other speaker. This is personal. <laughs> they don't care. But guess what? They got substantive concessions. Yes. Real life concessions. It matters. It works. Is Chank now for Kevin the Destroyer? <laughs> Pretty, <laughs> much, <yeah. laughs> Pretty much. And th that thing about the phone call is interesting. Uh, we can only speculate unless there's a public explanation. But it sounds to me as if uh, somebody on Capitol Hill called their their allies in media and said, knock this off. And instead of you know uh, trying to advocate for what they initially thought was a good idea, which is force the vote, they went along. And I do think a lot of this has to do with their animus and bitterness and jealousy of of Jimmy. But that's that's their business. That, that's their problem. But but here's Jimmy uh, responding to one of his haters, the the host of the middle aged McCarthyites. Reminder that Jenk switched his lie from saying McCarthy would become speaker if the squad did what the right wing is currently doing. Exactly what we're discussing. And let's remember, look, um, squad member. It, Ilhan Omar said this a few years ago. This is back in December 2020. Uh, as forced the vote was happening, she kicked it to the next Congress. She said, yes, we can. With a slim Democratic majority in the next Congress, anything can be possible. It will literally take five courageous progressive members to get concessions <laughs> on progressive policies. A Did squad, that ever happen, if you will? A squad, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Did that ever happen, Brie, as far as you know? It, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And look, I... I, I'm I'm torn about this because I think that I would be justified in having some frustrations with the things that um, Chang and some of the TYT people have said, um, kind of the personal attacks, all of that. But I, I I did appreciate, you know, Chang had me on a couple of months ago, a few months ago, to talk about why he called me a fake leftist and to try to bury the hatchet somewhat. At least he was willing to dialogue about it. Unfortunately. These people still, I think, are so caught up in the emotionality of their personal issues that they they won't even admit to this day the strategic value of something that's playing out before our eyes. And I think they're probably going to go to their grave. And, and I hope I'm wrong. And the door is open. I would love to talk to anybody about it. I would love to talk it through. But I, I, suggest, I suspect that they're all going to go to their grave, ignoring Ilhan Omar's tweet ignoring the success of what's happening right now for these 20 rogue Republicans, ignoring the fact that this was a DSA plan that Jimmy gleaned from their own material, ignoring that this is like basic leverage 101, ignoring the fact that uh, uh, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin have literally been doing a version of this for the last two years and have single-handedly stymied Joe Biden's entire agenda as crappy as it was to begin with. You know, like it, this obviously worked and I don't I don't really know what to do or to go from here because it's just obvious. The proof is in the pudding and the pudding is happening finally in a vote at 10 p.m. tonight where it seems like Kevin McCarthy seems to think that he finally has the votes after giving away the farm and significantly diminishing the power of the speaker. And I cannot I cannot in good conscience sit and laugh and cheer Kevin McCarthy's desk being pulled in and out of his office and the ambivalence about whether or not he gets to be speaker, like all these pro progressives seem to think it's a fun dog and pony show. I can't cheer that because I have the ghost memory in my brain, the memory <laughs> that is not really real of, of Pelosi's desk 
being pulled in and out of her office and what that would have meant and how exciting that would have meant, not just for the left, but for the three quarters of Americans who wanted Nancy Pelosi to step down back in 2020 when we were pushing this force the vote stuff. The poll at that time, three quarters of Americans didn't like Nancy Pelosi, wanted her to step down. And still people like Sam and Chank were arguing that in the great media battle around this, that Nancy Pelosi was going to be too sympathetic a character and too beloved and that it was going to be too much of a public image hit for the squad. <laughs> Everybody, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles in January and February in Los Angeles. And, and then we're going to Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets to become a premium member while you're there.